Thank you all for joining us uh, this afternoon. Before I get started, I want to express my condolences uh, to everyone who suffered loss at the hands of this virus, uh, including El Paso County Sheriff Deputy Jeff Hopkins, uh, age 41, who died uh, this week of COVID-19. Condolences to Jeff's family and to all the families who've been affected by loss. We're really heartbroken over the loss over uh, Sheriff Deputy Hopkins. When we lose emergency responders, you know, patriotic Americans and law enforcement, fire response, frontline health care workers, it really shows the selfless dedication uh, that these men and women show in protecting all of us, uh, often at risk of additional exposure themselves. Um, it's especially devastating news when we suffer that, that kind of loss, uh, just as every loss of human life is a great tragedy. Today I want to update you in three specific areas. Uh, first, relief for businesses and workers, the state, the federal. I know there's a lot of confusion. What am I getting? When am I going to get it? What's going on? How can I put food on my table? How can I make rent? Uh, you're saying to stay at home. How can I afford to stay at home? I hope to address some of those issues. Second, I want to about, talk about testing capacity and containment strategies. And third, some of the new efforts that are going on that are encouraging uh, to both stop the spread uh, as well as help make life a little bit easier for all Colorado's residents. You know, before we talk about economic support, I want to share how frustrated we all are. Um, we know the better job that we do staying at home, no matter how hard that is, the sooner we can return to something resembling normal economic activity, the ability to earn a living, the ability to do what you love and what makes Colorado special. And conversely, Failure to stay at home, the areas of our state, the areas of our country, the areas of the world that fail to stay at home extend all of this difficulty. They extend the period of economic pain. They uh, it means thousands or tens of thousands of fatalities. It uh, means they are risking losing uh, family members uh, and themselves to this terrible pandemic. As Coloradans make personal sacrifices that we are all making to prioritize our health our public health, the safety of residents. We know these have actions have real actions and the better we're staying at home and we take some of the additional steps we're gonna talk about today, uh, the better that we can return uh, to something close to normalcy in our state, which we are all incredibly eager to get back to. First, some of the steps we're taking at the state level to ease that immediate cash crunch. Uh, we're doing everything we can to provide the relief necessary to weather the storm. Uh, we're working hard to make sure that families and businesses that aren't getting paid or aren't getting revenue get more time, with no interest, no penalties, to file and pay any taxes due. A lot of folks have limited cash flow right now, families, small businesses. And we can't expect business as usual, and the state is more than willing to pay our part in doing that. I already announced that we're waiving all penalties and interest so people and businesses can extend the payment date for their state income tax from April 15th to July 15th, and that order is even broader than the, than the uh, delay that's been granted federally. Uh, it's even more expansive, uh, affects more Coloradans. And this leaves a billion dollars in the pockets of families and small businesses across the state for three more months to get through this crisis. Today I'm announcing additional steps. We're offering a one-time 30-day extension for businesses to file and remit their sales tax. This also includes local sales tax for 272 state collected local jurisdictions. Some cities collect their own, their home rule. The state collects it in many unincorporated areas and other areas of the state. This means that state sales tax that are owed April 20th don't need to be paid until May 20th. No penalty, no interest. This crisis is hitting small businesses hard, in particular retail, where a lot of that sales tax revenue uh, it generates. We want to make sure that as soon as you can open, that you're able to reopen. And for those of you who are customers of different stores out there, we want your favorite stores to be open. And we are delaying all of their payments due uh, in recognition of the fact that they're not generating uh, revenue right now. I was also proud to relax regulations so restaurants and bar staff can work as delivery drivers. Uh, so these businesses to help the ones that choose to stay open through this stay open, keep people employed. We want to remove as many barriers as we can uh, as long as we're not increasing physical proximity. Uh, economic productivity is our friend, it's not the enemy. The enemy is physical proximity. Maximize ability to earn incomes, economic productivity, minimize physical proximity. That is the economic 
and the health. They don't need to be mutually exclusive, and they can be consistent, and we're trying to do that in as thoughtful a way as possible. Today, I'm also announcing the extension of the period of time that counties waive interest payments for property taxes. Now, I've already signed an executive order allowing local governments to waive penalties and interest on property taxes through April 20th. Today, I'm extending it to May, the full 30 days that allowed under executive order. For property owners that are worried about paying your property tax in April, you can now split your property tax payments without any penalty or interest, half in April, half in June. Uh, no penalty, no interest. Uh, you can reach out to your county treasurer. It's the counties that collect that. Uh, we're doing everything we can to help make sure our businesses, communities, and families are taken care of in a very, very difficult time. Uh, I also signed an executive order that extends a number of deadlines for businesses to submit paperwork and valuations to their county assessors. Uh, we know that while businesses are in survival mode, the last thing we want them having to worry about and think about is filling out a bunch of documents that we can always, uh, always collect later. Here's the most important and exciting thing for you. It's the individual assistance. This is the stay-at-home money. This is the money that the federal government, Congress, Republicans, Democrats, President Trump, Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, most of our congressional delegations, Senator Gardner, Senator Bennett, they've stepped up and they're effectively paying us to stay at home. Uh, and that's, we know that if we're asking people to stay at home, they need a way to live. And that's why we are very excited by that this money will be hitting the, 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 the ballot checking accounts of Coloradans very soon. Of course, it's not enough, it's never enough, but we should all be grateful that if we're staying at home, at least the federal government is going to provide some money to almost every family. Um, this measure offers $1,200 in one time direct cash of payment to you. If you file your taxes, you don't even need to do anything. Uh, it goes directly to you. Uh, if you have Social Security, disability, you will still get that $1,200. Now, that's up to uh, if you were in $75,000 or less. Um, and, and then there's a sliding scale where you get some money up to about $100,000 in income. For a couple, that means you get this up to $150,000 in income. That means you get $2,400. You'll get that if you have up to $150,000 in income. Uh, and you don't need to file any additional paperwork to get that. Uh, there's also $500 per child, regardless of income. So if you're saying, oh my gosh, my family's combined earning is, or I, I earn, you know, I earn $101,000 uh, and I have a kid, uh, you still get the $500 per kid. A family, two wage earners that earn $220,000, two kids, you get $1,000. So if you claim them as dependents, you will get that. So they're $1,200 per person, up to $75,000 in income for an individual, then you get something up to $100,000. Uh, $2,400 for a couple, up to $150,000, and then you get something up to $200,000. And no matter what your income level, you'll be getting $500 per kid, 16 and under. Now, you know, I don't know why there's that arbitrary age, 17, no. 16, yes, but that's the off. So uh, let's hope your, your, if your kid's in high school, let's hope their birthday falls before that so you get that rather than, falls after that, so you get that rather than before that. Um, that's coming soon, and you get that even if you don't normally file taxes. Social Security recipients, SSI disability, railroad retirees. Uh, you can check out more information, irs.gov slash coronavirus. Almost everybody listening doesn't need to do a thing. That money will show up. Uh, again, if you have particular circumstances or you haven't filed or you don't file, you can find that guidance at irs.gov slash coronavirus. You are still eligible. Now, let's talk about unemployment for a moment. Uh, there's also additional unemployment benefits that will be provided federally, uh, $600 per week for four months. Uh, that's going to be absolutely critical in helping people get through who've already lost their jobs, especially people, industries that have been very hard hit, hospitality, tourism, uh, et cetera. Uh, you're, once you've exhausted your 26 weeks of state unemployment, you're eligible for another three months of unemployment that's paid for by this federal legislation. And if you've already filed and qualified, you don't need to file again to get that additional $600. Um, let's go to the next one, pan, pandemic unemployment assistance. Now, this is for folks who don't, who don't, every, are not traditional employees with the W-2. You're, 
gig economy or independent contractor, if you still lost work and wages, how do you get something in addition to that $1,200 check? Uh, the Colorado Department of Labor and Deployment is really in the forefront of standing up a system to do that. Uh, benefits would run for up to nine months, depending on uh, the severity of how long these measures uh, entail. And we're hopeful that these benefits can be calculated uh, subject to guidance from the federal government on previous income with the federal assistance on top. So don't consider this free money for anybody, the $1,200, the unemployment. This is what we would call stay-at-home money. You earn it by staying at home. Uh, you uh, don't earn it by going about and, 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 and spreading the virus. We're asking you to earn this money by staying at home. That's what the federal government is paying folks to do. Republicans, Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, President Trump, Mitch McConnell, uh, all are, are putting uh, the federal government here to say, we need to pay you to stay at home. Now, please keep a close eye on coloradoui.gov. That's for the unemployment side. You do need to file for that. I know the website has been uh, had um, increased capacity and there were times you couldn't get through. That's largely cleared up. So if you did have trouble filing, go to coloradoui.gov. It can still only process a certain number of transactions at a given time. So if you're trying to turn a peak hour, I would just ask you to try back early in the morning, late at night. You will get through. Um, many Coloradans already have successfully registered. coloradoui.gov. And how do you do that? Uh, you go through these simple steps. We'll make this slide available to folks um, in terms of collecting the re relevant information, filling out the application, reviewing your claim, and registering with the lo your local workforce. Next slide. Uh, this is a site for more information. If you want information on unemployment, coloradoui.gov, also coloradogov.cdle for all of these extended programs. Next slide. Now, this is really important. This is about our small businesses, or really business. You know, so if you have a small business, or you work for one, you might wonder, how can we afford to keep our payroll up when people aren't coming to work? Now, the state is doing this as a model employer. We have 30,000 employees. They're telecommuting. Of course, we're continuing to pay them. Many large companies have figured this out. Some haven't. I hope they will. But what do you do if you're a 15-person company, and they're literally making this decision? Do we furlough our people, or can we carry them through the two or three weeks that we can operate? We hope that businesses are doing their best to keep people on payroll for those two or three weeks. And there's federal help to do that. Uh, this is a very simple program where effectively you can get more information at choosecolorado.com or covid19relief.sba.gov. Uh, businesses will get financing, forgivable loans, forgivable loans, as long as they keep the people employed, they will be forgiven for two and a half months of your average month's payroll expense. So it's an incentive for a business to keep people on payroll rather than furlough them or even lay them off, right? If you get laid off, you get UI. Furloughed, you may or may not be coming back. We want you to stay on, get your benefits, everything you get through your employer. And this major, major program, $349 billion federally is, is, is supporting this, uh, will help all those businesses, especially the ones that have to be closed, don't have cash flow, workers can't go to work. It's helping them keep their employees on payroll during this massive public health crisis. So pass that along to your small business owner, friends, medium businesses. Uh, we encourage our businesses to keep people on payroll. And of course, the government is stepping up to help them do that uh, through the federal aid package. Update on where we are today. Here is a slot by age of where we are uh, with infections. Uh, we have, to, this is the partial update. Uh, we have a full update at four, but we have 4,174 cases. 806 hospitalizations, 105 people have passed away from coronavirus here in Colorado, tested over 22,000 people. Uh, and as I've mentioned at all of these, and it's important for all of us to know this, I think we all know this without having to hear it, but this is going to get worse before it gets better. The good news, it's going to get better. We're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. The economy is going to get through this, uh, but it is going to get worse. And we're all uh, the actions that we take staying at home uh, will directly save lives and shorten this interruption to us being able to earn a living. Let's talk about testing for a moment. 
I'm proud we've made enormous progress in testing. I mean, a month ago, like much of the country, uh, Colorado uh, was building it from scratch, about 160 per day. We're over 2,000 a day now. Uh, and the news is actually better than that when you dig down. Next slide. We have the capacity to actually run right now in Colorado over 10,000 tests per day. And that's through our partners, Denver Health, UC Health, National Jewish, Children's Hospital, all performing hundreds of tests per day. This doesn't even count tests that are sent out to other labs elsewhere. This is just in state. Now, if people are wondering, well, that's great. Why aren't we performing 10,000 per day, over 2,000 per day, up from 160? Great improvement. It's because we need the reagent agents and the testing supplies. And so that is the focus of our efforts here to help procure these. It's also a question of our healthcare partners, UC Health, Kaiser, others. They are focused on prioritizing tests for those who need medical care, uh, as well as scaling their hospital beds and other activities. So we are pushing the envelope on testing every day. Uh, we hope to be able to have the reagents, supplies, as soon as possible. Very specifically, uh, we expect to grow, next slide, over the next two weeks to 3,500 tests per day. Uh, by May 1st, at least 5,000 per day. I'd love to be able to at least do that, at least 5,000, but wouldn't it be great if we can do the 10,000 per day that we're currently geared up to do because we have enough reagent and enough supplies and swabs, and that includes personal protection equipment. Remember, uh, that has to be prioritized right now for hospital workers as our orders are delivered. We talked about how strange that world looks in terms of orders and us wheeling and dealing and getting different supplies for Colorado. As those are here in hand, that means that people doing testing can have it. What's very important for people to know though, is there is no clinical treatment for those who are uh, having uh, mild to medium symptoms of COVID-19. That means if you think you have it, you don't, you, the last thing you should do is rush out to try to get a test because we don't want you to expose yourself to others and endanger others. You need to assume you have it and stay at home. Only about 10% of people will need any medical help. So for most people who contract COVID-19, you stay at home, you isolate, you don't associate with others until four or five days after your last symptom and your fever have gone away, then uh, you're able to uh, interact with others again. So if you're ill, stay at home. If you need medical attention, of course seek that medical attention because whether you have COVID-19 or not, if you're having difficulty even breathing uh, or other severe symptoms that require medical intervention, please call for that medical help. And we're doing everything we can uh, to make sure that we can get to a situation. The sooner we can increase that testing, the sooner we can also do the isolation of people who are contagious. We're relying on you to isolate now with any symptoms. Uh, and frankly, look, even if you don't have COVID-19, if you have a bad case of the flu, you don't want to spread that in your community either. I mean, that's a, there's a lot of illnesses you could have. So only seek medical attention when you need it. Here's the big change that we are implementing today. Uh, we're asking all Coloradans to wear face coverings when they go out of the house for any of your essential functions like grocery shopping or other functions. I'll show you how this looks. Now, if you've been around grocery stores, you've noticed that more and more people are wearing cloth masks. We want everybody in Colorado to do that. Now, to model behavior, if I had gotten home from the grocery store, I would now, this would go into the wash, the heated wash. If you don't have a wash at home, uh, you can use the uh, hottest setting on your water, on your sink. I would then wash my hands for at least 20 seconds and wash my face. <clears throat> The Asian societies, South Korea, Taiwan, and Japan, that have had the best response to this pandemic, meaning they're able to have the closest to normal activity economically, people are still able to go to work, there's some movement restrictions, but they're much better off than, than we are, and also less cases and deaths. They already have <clears throat> a strong mask culture. Uh, if any of you have been to Asia or friends to Asia, you might have seen that. I've, I've been to Japan twice in my life. And it's interesting to see, even on a, when a normal day, if people are at all ill, they, have, they, they wear masks on the street. You see people with masks on the street every day. Replicating that during this COVID epidemic, having that as part of our culture here in Colorado, in the United States of America, is a really important part of reducing the spread of the virus to save lives and return to a functional economy where people can go to work sooner rather than later. We're asking all Coloradans to wear non-medical cloth face masks when they go out of the house for necessary activities like grocery shopping or 
uh, walking around uh, your neighborhood. At this point, a cloth face mask or scarf should be part of everybody's personal hygiene practices and distancing practices. This is really going to be, for the foreseeable future, an important part of our culture in Colorado, our culture that saves lives and also helps us all return to work sooner rather than later. The key element is covers mouth and covers nose. And you can make this out of anything at home. We have Sarah Thunberg here who's heading up our mass scaling project to talk about uh, this. But I want to I want to challenge everybody. Of course, we're asking folks uh, that and when folks need to know that the N95 mask, the surgical mask, we need all of those that we can get for our health workers, our nurses and others. We certainly hope to be at the point when some of these orders are actually delivered and on the ground where we can also supply high grade masks to others like grocery workers and others that might be in exposure. But in your own home, in your own decision, it's about the right mask for the right job. Uh, and it's about making it cool so others do it. So get out those old t-shirts, you know, 1998 guacamole champion, it shrunk, you never thought you'd use it again. Get it out of the bottom of your drawer and be creative about making that into a mask. Cover your mouth, cover your uh, nose, and make sure you can breathe easily through it. You don't want to restrict your own breathing with an effective mask. Uh, old t-shirts are perfect for this. We, we, all, we all have them. Um, I'll be going through some of mine in, in the days ahead and, and showing you what me and our kids are able to put together. You don't even have to have a sewing machine. Uh, it, it, it can simply be uh, done with scissors and tied. You can also use rubber bands. Sarah's going to talk more about that. What I want to make clear is that studies show that there's really every reason to use these non-medical face masks as a precaution. Wearing something over your nose and mouth. When you go out, you're not going to wear these around the house, right? Um, nor are they sufficient if you have a family member who has COVID. You need to isolate them in a different part of your home. You're not, you're not going to be in the same part of the house if you have this. But when you're out of the home, uh, you, should, you should use a mask at all times. And that's important. Uh, the spread of the virus occurs mostly through droplets in the air. That's from the, it comes in through your nose or your mouth, which fa fabrics can filter. Also, about 25 to 50 percent of people are asymptomatic. If you are wearing a mask, you may be preventing yourself from spreading it, even if you don't know that you have it. And you're protecting others and also reducing the, uh, the duration of, of uh, this stay-at-home piece. Combining face coverings with frequent hand washing reduces the transmission of the virus. It also sends a message to others that we all need to be thoughtful about changing our behavior to reflect this virus. Now, it's human nature to go along with a trend, and as more people start to wear masks, others will follow. Every person wearing a mask has an impact on reducing the viral spread and shorten, shortening this disruption to socializing and the economy. So let's make it cool. Show everybody what you're doing. If you do Twitter or TikTok or Facebook, show folks what you're doing to be clever uh, and cool about wearing masks. Um, this is what we all need to do right now whenever you're leaving your home to go grocery shopping or anything else. It's not what we chose, any of us, but let's have fun with it and make it cool. Let's, 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 let's make lemonade out of these lemons and let's try to get everybody to show that we need to do our part uh, with, with clever masks and, and cool masks and how important that is with old teachers, with scarves, with anything you have that can cover your nose and mouth and not impede your breathing. I want to introduce Sarah Thunberg with our innovation response team, who's going to introduce a very special visual guest that we have for you today, who's going to share another message uh, about masks in Colorado. Sarah Thunberg uh, has entered our team from the private sector, successful CEO, entrepreneur. Uh, she is helping to scale up for days now. We've been working on rolling out this uh, mask piece with the community side. Uh, with the business side, and I'm very excited that she's here to help talk about some of these projects. Sarah? Thank you, Governor. It is an incredible honor to introduce one of the truly cool people of Colorado, a remote visit from Nathaniel Rateliff. Live, and I'm here to let you know that there's a right mask for the 
the right job. Those providing medical care need to have access to all available N95 and surgical masks. The rest of us? Well, there's a growing body of evidence that non-medical mask uses can help flatten the curve. Let's make wearing masks an everyday thing. Hello, everybody. This is Nathaniel Rateliff, and I'm here to let you know that there's a right mask for the right job. Those providing medical care need to have access to all available N95 and surgical masks. The rest of us? Well, there's a growing body of evidence that non-medical mask uses can help flatten the curve. Let's make wearing masks an everyday thing. When do you wear one? Well, anytime you're out of the house. We are on a mission to get masks into the hands of every Coloradan. Essential workers first, and then one for each of us regular folks. We need you. Join me, Governor Polis, and the Colorado Mask Project. So Nathaniel Rateliff might be one of the cooler people, but we all need to wear masks when we go out of the house. These are fabric face coverings. And we, in order to get every Coloradan to wear one, we need everyone to help. So we've partnered with the Colorado Mask Project, where you can find them at coloradomaskproject.com. It's an incredible gra grassroots organization that is working to give you the patterns and the creativity and the knowledge to make your own masks. I wanna reiterate something that the governor said, you do not need to leave the house to participate in this. You can use whatever you have at home. You also don't need sewing skills, just a pair of scissors and you can make your own. And we ask you not to leave the house to do this. We need to equip other Coloradans who might not be able to have their own masks. So we're partnering with Colorado Mask Project on this effort. Additionally, we're working with some really generous Colorado companies to ensure our frontline workers, our essential workers like grocery clerks, grocery workers, food deliverers, have fabric face coverings quickly. So I wanna say thank you to Function Wear, who made that great mask that the governor had, also Craftsman and Apprentice, who spearheaded the Colorado Mask Project effort, Denver Mattress Company, Hunter Douglas, Osprey, Topo Designs, Melanzana, the Fashion Design Center, and Duder. This is a great partnership of our outdoor industries folks, as well as large manufacturers and the Craftsman community to get us all to wear a fabric mask every time we go out. I'd like to announce that, that these, through the donations of these incredible organizations, we're going to have at least 100,000 masks a week delivered to our most vulnerable residents and our essential workers. We're gonna use existing strategies like food banks and other uh, grassroots approaches to ensure that everybody has a mask. Please, today, starting today, make yourself a mask, wear it. We can do this together. Thank you so much. Governor? So coloradomaskproject.com, right on there. Uh, you can get all the information you need, but you can also just, as I said, make these at home. That's the important thing. This is going to be uh, our culture for now. What this will do as we wear masks when we're out and about, as we get a better masks to people that are in our front lines, if we get enough of the professional quality masks, we're going to get them out uh, as far as we can to people that encounter others. This will reduce the need for us to have to have these very challenging and extreme measures, the measures where the federal government is paying people to stay at home. Uh, and we want to end those as soon as possible. And the more people wear masks, the sooner that those can roll off and people uh, can start being able to support themselves and, and their families. Um, so many great private sector partners uh, in that. I want to thank all of them. Together, they've committed to donating over 200,000 masks uh, by April. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for help to coordinate them. Um, there's a lot of other things that are really important here in Colorado. I want to take a moment to applaud the many Coloradans who are already taking our state response to the pandemic very seriously. And I know that staying at home is hard. We're people who love to live our lives outdoors. You can only spend so much time at a computer or playing board games or in front of our television screens. One of the best ways to refocus our attention in a positive way is by opening our hearts and homes uh, to a pet. 
or perhaps lavishing attention on the pet that you already have. Uh, it's really taking care of others that helps gives us a sense of purpose uh, when many of us feel helpless. And for these reasons, we've temporarily relaxed regulations that make it easier to foster and adopt pets who would otherwise have to spend time waiting for someone to give them a chance for a happy life. It's really a win-win for people and pets. In-home visitation for fostering pets is waived. And it's despite the false rumors of the contrary, you cannot catch COVID-19 from your pets. Uh, pets are very safe to have in your home. They're a comfort to you. Uh, and they're important for our mental and physical health as well as theirs. First Gentleman Marlon Reese and our team of volunteers at the Colorado Department of Agriculture and the state's pet protection program called PACFA uh, have put together a guide of licensed shelters and rescues that are organized by city and county so you can easily be linked up with an animal in need to foster or adopt. Some are able to do in-person uh, adoptions now, some are unable to just operationally, but many of them are doing it, and of course almost all of them are doing fostering. But you can find the one closest to where you live, protectcoloradoanimals.org, and I want to encourage you to visit that. There's really never been a better time to foster or help um, a pet, and I know that this will make a difference uh, in their life as well as yours, uh, and a positive one. Finally, I'm also announcing we're extending the special enrollment period for the health state, uh, the health uh, exchange for Colorado, Connect for Health Colorado, until April 30th. That's connectforhealthco.com. Normally that's closed, but there's people who uh, thought they would go without insurance this year, now realizing they might want it. Uh, that includes uh, the subsidies you might get depending on your income level. Let's focus on why we're, we're doing all this. I mean, these these types of actions are really bringing us together as a state, as a country, as the world, uh, because we all uh, can't wait uh, until life gets back to closer to normal. So take this seriously. We need to take this as our patriotic duty to stay home, to stop the spread, to wear masks, and to save lives. Uh, thank you all for taking this as seriously as it deserves to be taken. This is our livelihoods we're talking about. Uh, when people are out and about wearing masks, they're not just cool. They're literally allowing all of us to return to work sooner uh, and save lives as we build the medical capacity we need to address the surge of patients in Colorado. Happy to take some questions. Governor, can we uh, talk about the mask? Thing is, is one thing that you want to make cool, but why not use this opportunity now to extend the April 11th? Or have you done that? We've just missed it. No, uh, we extended school closures till April 30th. Uh, somebody asked us at the last uh, press availability. It is very likely that will need to be extended. The president has set April 30th as a date. Uh, we want to use data in all of our decision making processes. And when we walk through that lag impact, on the time frame, we are already seeing the uh, the impact of the bar and restaurant closure. We're just going to start to see the impact of the social distancing, and then we also hope this starts today. Wearing masks, right? You're wearing masks if you're going to the grocery store today, or if you are one of the people that has to go to work because you're in a critical sector. We want you to wear masks, and we want those employers to distribute masks to the extent they can. Some have masks. Get them to your workers. Uh, if you don't employees bring them in and wear them those effects will we won't know for another 10 to 12 days so uh, it is likely to be extended we'll make that decision not at the 11th hour but with enough notice uh, so people have some sense uh, of when we might be able to to do everything but the president has said april 30th we're currently april 11th not for everything april 30th is schools and many of the other things so we're going to look at timing these things everyone's goal is for people to be able to return earn a living and get back to work as soon as we can. The second goal is, of course, we can't do that at the expense of lives. So we're building capacity, we're containing the virus. The more people wear masks and the more people are staying home, the more the data will reflect that and the sooner we can return to normal. Um, Governor, will you issue widespread guidance for prisons, jails, and courts statewide now that COVID-19 is spreading throughout the jails? They're all seem to be there's been at least two sets of orders and guidance with regard to uh, jails and prisons that have come out of our office. We've already uh, uh, frozen many of the inter-jail transfers uh, and we're continuing to work with our county sheriffs and partners uh, to try to reduce the likelihood and the impact of 
viral outbreaks in our 24-7 uh, facilities. Telephone question? Hi, Governor. This is Zach Newman with Nine News. Um, at Windsor Gardens, a 55 and plus community in Denver, uh, one person has died and another person in that household has a confirmed case. A resident I spoke to wants uh, comprehensive testing to stop the outbreak, and he, he understands that there's a shortage of testing, but he said that he wants you to, quote, find a way and end last year, quote, ready for us to die, end quote. Do so response? Testing doesn't save a life. Isolation saves a life. Um, and if he was tested or others were tested, uh, some would test negative, even though they might just be developing the virus or uh, be asymptomatic and not yet converting. So depending on the kind of test, it, it, it uh, might pick it up at a point after uh, the, the, the virus can be transmitted. So uh, it's not the act of testing that saves anybody. There's no medical treatment, right? If you need medical intervention, you get oxygen, you get vents. It's the same for any pneumonia, any respiratory disorder. There's nothing unique to COVID-19. There's some novel therapies that are being tried. Um, but the answer is to isolate and avoid contact with those who might be contagious. Uh, of course, uh, people like to have uh, certainty of mind and, and there's value in that for having him tested or having his friends tested. Uh, but that should not be a false sense of security. Um, the mass testing, uh, which we have the capacity for over 10,000, we sent out 4,500 tests uh, just several days ago to the uh, health care authorities across our state to administer. Uh, these are happening every day. They're gearing up every day. But it's not the test that saves anybody's life. It's the resultant change in somebody's behavior that changes, uh, that, that saves lives. And so that's what we're asking is people to stay at home, except when absolutely necessary, and when they do go out to wear a mask. And for folks who are most vulnerable, over 65, or have respiratory conditions, stay at home at all times unless you need medical attention. Um, the last thing anybody should do is try to go out to a hospital and get a test, because if you don't have it, you could contract it there. That's, uh, that, that is not behavior that is likely to increase your safety. Because if, you, if it comes up positive, you're told to stay home anyway, because 90% of people don't need to do any kind of medical treatment on top of just staying home and convalescing. ensure the safety of the employees and then also kind of going off of what you said today, uh, how long would you suggest that grocery workers wear those facial coverings? Would one last for the day in your opinion? Yeah, so right now uh, many grocery stores are, some are providing masks as employers, other employees are bringing their own. We now want all employees to bring their own. We, it'll help protect the employees that the shoppers are now wearing masks. That's a major step that will increase the safety of the people that work in our grocery stores is that shoppers should be wearing masks uh, when they are going starting tonight. That's a very important piece of why we're converting to a mask culture uh, to reduce the spread of the virus, particularly for those who might be exposing grocery stores and others. We continue uh, to push them to do as much as they can uh, with all of our orders around the, uh, um, the N95 masks when we have enough, uh, which we hope that day is sooner rather than later. We know that there will be a day where we have more than enough, whether that day is next week or in three weeks. We, we will we'll, we'll trust and verify. We'll see when it's on the ground. The masks are here. Uh, yes, we hope that we can also provide professional masks in many of those facilities where people are exposed to others. But in the meantime, uh, encourage your employer to provide masks. If they aren't, do it yourself. Bring it from home. Uh, that's all across all of our critical employment sectors. But uh, grocery store workers, and others that work in critical areas of retail where they're exposed to customers will have the biggest immediate safety gains from this uh, decision to move to wearing masks in Colorado. Telephone. In person. And that's correct. Um, it's not. It's not orders of magnitude off. He, he asked if the death count uh, is also off, just as the undiagnosed count is. 
the undiagnosed count, we, you know, estimate that there's several times the number of diagnosed cases uh, in our state today. Uh, the death count does not have that order of magnitude difference. It's certainly possible that there's a few people uh, that whose deaths have not been confirmed from COVID-19 but are attributable to COVID-19. It's also possible that there were some before uh, this diagnosis became as common as it is today. But it's not off by an order of magnitude. We have a good degree of confidence. Uh, whenever there's a death in Colorado, uh, there's an examination. If, it, if it's in a medical setting, the death certificate's issued there. If not, there's a coroner involved. So it, it should be very close to the actual count, um, and it's possible the actual count exceeds that by a few. Uh, Governor, you talked, I don't know if it was earlier this week or last week, I really explained it together here, but you talked about the virus slowing down. Do you still believe that's the case, or uh, have things gotten worse, or is it still on that double every two days? Yeah, so it's, it's now at about doubling every five days, uh, which is much better than by doubling every one and a half to two days, but that means it's still spreading. So what that hasn't taken into account yet <clears throat> is the stay-at-home order which will be the effects of that we will see in the next few days. And now this movement to masks, which we'll see in 10 to 12 days as everybody wears masks. Those are the next two steps that we really hope uh, reduce that so there's actually less people that are contracting the virus and less hospitalizations every day rather than more. But as we've walked through, because of that lag time, even though the stay-at-home order went in, even though people are now wearing masks, the hospitalization number and the diagnosis number will still continue to increase for a number of days before that tapers off uh, because of the health impact of these actions. Telephone? Governor, Charles Ashtree from Grand Duke and Sentinel. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thanks, Governor. I appreciate it. Uh, hey, listen, so we've been getting a lot of people who've been coming over here to Mesa County uh, to our bike trails and our hiking trails and our parks and so, so forth and a check of their license plate shows that uh, they're not local. Some of them are out of state, but some of them are clearly not from Mesa County. I know you've already said that uh, people shouldn't treat this like a vacation and they shouldn't go too far from home, but I'm wondering if you've thought about uh, saying or doing something stronger to keep people from here because a lot of people are worried that uh, areas of the state that have more infections are bringing them here. And, and that's why many counties across our state uh, are closing uh, uh, campgrounds and trails, uh, playground equipment and, and playgrounds across the state uh, should be closed. Uh, this is important for everybody to know that this is not a vacation. Um, you, of course, might need to get outdoors and walk your dog, walk around your neighborhood with your kids. That doesn't mean you should drive 40 miles uh, and do it there. Do it close to your home, in an area close to your home to avoid that mixing between different areas that spreads the virus. And might mean that an area that might have a lower rate or be free of the virus could have the virus brought to it if they're not acting to close some of those attractions in their area or at least to implement additional uh, social distancing guidelines. So that's very important that people treat this as the pandemic it is, not a vacation, that you accept, if you're accepting that $1,200 or $2,400 per couple from the federal government, you're accepting that with your honor intact for a job that you're doing and that job is staying home. You are cheating the federal government and cheating the rest of us if you're pocketing that money and going out and socializing and hanging out with other people. Uh, this is a payment to stay at home, and we all have our honor and integrity. We don't want a handout. We want to earn it. You're earning it by staying at home, except when absolutely necessary. Next question. Let me see. Anybody who has not asked one in the room? Okay. Uh, yes. Desafortunadamente, no todos los residentes de Colorado son elegibles para la ayuda federal económico. Pero es muy importante ayudemos a todos nuestros residentes. Todos son un parte de la salud de nuestro estado y todos son un parte 
uh, de nuestros uh, ganos. Por ello, mi equipo ha trabajado con el sector privado para recordar fondos para medio del de Help Colorado Fund y organizaciones que ayudan a refugiados y inmigrantes tienen prioridad para recibir apoyo económico del sector privado y así ayudar a nuestra comunidad inmigrante. Stephen. Governor, um, you're on Facebook Live now and people are freaking out with the mask thing. They're saying they're not going to take orders from you. Can you just clarify again? This is, and I think your literature says you're encouraging yeah. people. People need to get this. This is not a contest to see how far against the line you can get, right? It's not a contest to say, how can I have a quiet party in my neighborhood and nobody finds out, or how can I uh, keep my uh, 30 people coming into work with nobody finding out. This is a contest to find out how soon we can squash this virus in Colorado. And you're either helping to do that or you're not helping to do that. If you want to help to do that, stay at home, except when absolutely necessary, and wear a mask when you go out. And yes, try to have fun with it and make it cool, right? Do this project with your kids or whoever's in your home, with your spouse. It's something to finally do with those old t-shirts I know you have. Everybody does. In that bottom drawer, in the closet, finally, you don't have to throw them out like you thought you would you now can make something that can save lives out of them. This, if you want to treat this as a contest, treat it as a contest to be as isolated as you can during this period. And the more people win that contest, the sooner we can all return to work, return to socializing, return to having fun, and get past this horrific pandemic here in Colorado. Telephone? Go ahead. We'll take uh, one more, two, one more in person, and then one more on the phone. Yes. Wondering uh, with the weekend coming up and with uh, churches gathering or considering gathering, is there any action that the state is thinking about taking to try to prevent them? And then, are you guys keeping track of um, recovery numbers? We, uh, I've had, an, I've had several calls, and I have my next one next Tuesday with faith leaders from around the state. In these challenging times, uh, the role that our faith communities and leaders play in bringing people together in fellowship is more important than ever before. And they're rising uh, to the challenge of bringing people together emotionally and spiritually without bringing t people together physically. Uh, we know that our institutions of faith have great respect for life. And that's why they're leading the way in avoiding physical gatherings and supporting their members who should not be going out, 70-year-olds, 80-year-olds, who shouldn't even be going to the grocery store. So many churches are stepping up and having members deliver groceries to their doorstep so that they don't have to go out and put themselves at risk. Uh, we're continuing to work with them to uh, make sure that we can have an expansive view as possible around how they can safely minister to the needs of their congregation. There's an update on that from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment and I look forward to updating them in person on the phone next Tuesday. Final telephone question. Matt, Matt are you there? Going go once, going twice. Next one on the phone. There is another one on the phone. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Phone, please. Can you hear me? Yes, Joe, go ahead. Final right, question. Uh, hey, Governor. I just want to ask you uh, about the hospitalization rate at all. It's now the fifth straight day. We've averaged about 96 uh, new admissions into the hospital. Does that give you any pause uh, that we're not seeing it spike up to 200 a day or 300 uh, a day? And then also, uh, one more question just with the mask. Do you want social shaming for people not wearing masks? Do you want people to say, hey, where's your mask? Let me ask your, your first question first, Joe. Um, you asked about, about social shaming. 
Uh, I'd rather that we lead through positive example. Let's make it cool and have as much fun with it as we can. Post those masks you're making or using as odd as they are, as weird as they are, as beautiful as they are, if you're talented, whatever you're doing, share that and, and let's get everybody into this wearing those masks. Um, look, by wearing a mask, you're helping to protect the grocery worker, the liquor store worker, the other person who may be out on a bike or walking their dog around the neighborhood, as well as protecting yourself. So this is an individual, uh, an aspect of personal responsibility, but also responsibility for others. I think, look, as Coloradans, we all want to show that we're responsible people. And the way that we can show that we're responsible uh, for the next few weeks is by wearing a mask, whenever you're out in your neighborhood, at the grocery store, helping to save lives, and also reducing the duration of these extreme measures that need to be taken. Um, if you're not staying at home, if you're, whenever possible, if you're not wearing masks, you're only prolonging this for the rest of us, and you're costing lives of fellow Coloradans. So, Let's lead from the place of wanting to do the right thing, which Coloradans do, acting responsibly, and showing and modeling that behavior for others in as fun and cool a way as we can, given these very difficult circumstances. You asked about the number of people being hospitalized. We, we walked through it a previous presentation, and I'll talk again about that lag effect between when you take any measure and when it has any effect on hospitalization. That can be 12 to 15 days. So three days, five days for, uh, from exposure to symptoms. And by the way, there's uh, literature saying it can be eight or nine days, but we're going to say many of them will manifest in five days, if not most. And then eight days average from first symptom onset to hospitalization. So that will be a trailing indicator. We already see the decrease in rates from closing bars and restaurants, thankfully, before St. Patrick's Day. Uh, and then we will soon see the impact from stay at home. And then in about 10 days, 12 days, we're gonna start seeing the impact from wearing masks, especially again, for those grocery workers and others. And there's been a number of incidences of, of folks who have contracted that. Uh, we, we wanna reassure their safety as well as ours. One more from the phone since we had trouble earlier, and then we'll conclude. Thank you. Go ahead. Phone. Governor, this is uh, Betty Dale Judice uh, from Bloomberg uh, News in Denver. Another question regarding the uh, prison system, the correction system. On the cell blocks, what steps are being taken? Are they single bunking? Are they locked down in the dormitories? Are they moving bunks up? How is that being handled in the facilities? And also, any idea any of the closed prisons possibly might be reopened? Thank you. So we, uh, I want to thank our corrections officers. Uh, we have really important folks, and folks who work for the sheriff's departments across the state too, anybody who works in a jail or prison, thank you for, for doing what you need to do. While 75% of state workers, while many other workers are able to telecommute or able to work from home or able to work on staggered schedules, we know that those who man and, and the women in our 24-hour, uh, seven-day facilities have to be there. So thank you. This, and we're doing everything we can to keep you safe, and we're doing everything we can to keep those who are under the protection of the state uh, safe. Uh, and that includes additional social distancing in those cells, reduced interaction between cells. All those steps are being taken uh, both by our state, and I've been following what many counties are doing, both uh, in conjunction with our state guidance, as well as on their own to help keep uh, the prison guards safe and to prevent outbreaks uh, in the prisons as well. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Let's wear masks Colorado. ColoradoMaskProject.com gives you some ideas. Share what you're doing. I'll be out and about when I go on my daily walk with our kids and our dog wearing a mask. Uh, we'll be digging through our drawers to see what we can do with our old t-shirts and I know that you will too. Hashtag doing my part CO. Let's share what we're doing and let's show that Colorado is up to this challenge and that we're up to squashing out this virus and moving forward together as quickly as possible. Thank you.
poll us on the state's response to the coronavirus pandemic. Some key takeaways from his news conference today, I, and you saw it, wear masks. Starting right now, in fact, he's asking all Coloradans to wear face masks when you are out and about. Uh, it doesn't have to be a medical cloth mask, just uh, any kind of a cloth mask or a scarf for the foreseeable future. Um, he says the virus is doubling now in Colorado every five days, which is an improvement. He says masks, wearing masks will also help that. And the latest numbers he uh, revealed today 806 hospitalizations, 105 deaths right now in Colorado. And he says those numbers will get worse and we all just need to stay at home. A couple of things for businesses. He's saying the that uh, the income tax um, payment has been extended. Sales tax also extended as well for businesses. For homeowners, he's also offering up a property tax extension so that you can now split your payments half in April, half in June. Those are for property homeowners. Um, and the question of when can we return to life as we know it, obviously still up in the air. So he's saying wearing masks, not wearing masks, that will only prolong it. So we know you still have a lot of questions. We are working to come up with answers for you. So coming up tonight on Denver 7, we have a Denver 7 exclusive for you. Mayor Michael Hancock and leading health experts from Denver will be answering your questions live right here on Denver 7. We will have local updates on the coronavirus pandemic, so much more. We are taking your questions, so just visit the denverchannel.com slash contact seven town hall. In fact, you can submit your questions right now and be sure and join us tonight at six on Denver seven for all of that. So that's all coming up later on this evening. We thank you so much for joining us uh, for this uh, news conference. We'll send you back to programming right now. Thank you.